What's up YouTube? Welcome back. We have an update on the Springfield XDM 10mm Elite 3.8 inch from Springfield. We've had a few updates on this firearm. Now we actually have some answers about the trigger. Finally we have answers. I think they were accidental answers, but we have them nonetheless. So just to quickly catch people up. This gun was flawless. This gun ate every kind of ammo we put through it. Light stuff, hot stuff, really hot stuff, 40 caliber. Um, it just, it, it ate everything. It didn't malfunction at all. We had no failure to feed. We had no failure to eject. Um, slide lock back every time. It reciprocated just about everything. We did some weird stuff to it. We put it, you know, through a minor freeze test. Um, we even put 357 SIG into it and just to see if it would reciprocate. It didn't, but it did fire and it was fine. Um, this gun is a horse. We really like it. A lot of people in the comments own this firearm. Uh, they talk about how great it is, and we know that this gun went through some sort of a 10,000 round test that Springfield did. Um, supposedly it's well documented. I personally haven't even seen that test, but it's out there, I guess. This gun was flawless until, boom, the trigger broke. We were just shooting regular range ammo. It was We were just trying to shoot some long range shots. Take a look back at the video. I'll try to post it here, or at least in the comments. Um, we were just shooting the 100 yard plate, and it's good at shooting the 100 yard plate. I wasn't doing so well that day, I don't believe. Uh, then we moved up to the 75 yard line. That's exactly why we moved up, because I wasn't doing so good. I loaded a fresh magazine. We were running, I believe, 1,100 feet, feet per second ammo through it. Uh, that's not really too much to ask out of this firearm. And all of a sudden, boom, we had a dead trigger. All right, let's just try some random reloads I have that I got to get rid of. We're at about 75 yards now. I have a completely stopped trigger. My trigger is dead. It's locked. It's like jammed. The striker's back. So let's fast forward a little bit. Me and a gunsmith friend of mine, uh, we both separately took this gun apart two different times. We, when you remove the trigger mechanism, uh, it would move uh, the block on top of it. It would free it up. Prior to that, it did have the backstrap safety locked up, but that quickly alleviated itself just by playing with it. Um, so the trigger would move once it was released. When you put it back in, it was locked up again. So I thought, hey, let's test out Springfield. I do this for you guys. This is part of the whole honesty factor of my channel. I want you guys to see how firearms are really going to perform out of the box, not a hand-picked firearm, something I bought with my own money. We take it out to the range. We shoot it. We shoot it with full magazines. We shoot it under real conditions. We put all kinds of ammo through it. And if it breaks, you know, I'd really like to know what went wrong with it. Uh, but I'd also like to test the customer service of whatever company it came from. Smith & Wesson's customer service on the M&P 10 was horrible. Springfield, however, was much better. They talked to me on the phone. Uh, they answered my questions right off the bat. They got the warranty, the RMA, everything. We sent the firearm in. The turnaround was great. The turnaround was like two and a half weeks, I think. It was back in my house. And it was fixed. Uh, it was a replaced trigger. Um, they didn't... I asked them, you know, I left them a note. Can you please tell me what broke and, you know, what you did to fix it? They didn't do that, of course. I didn't really expect a technician to do that. So I called. I talked to a couple people there, and they eventually gave me to one guy. Uh, he was a good guy as far as being nice with customer service. He told me he would get to the bottom of it. He said he'd talk to the technician, he'd have the technician call me. It was a broken trigger. They replaced a broken trigger, and that's all he knew. So we knew that it was a broken trigger. Anyway, I waited a day, I waited another day, I waited another day. I've called in between a couple times to see if the technician would get back to me. They said, he's the note's there, he's going to get back to me. Well, a week went by, a week and a half went by, nobody got back to me. I finally called Springfield and I talked to a young lady 
who I, I explained to her what I was going through, but I acted like it was a fresh call. I didn't act like I'd really been dealing with a whole lot of it. She said, hold on, let me get to the bottom of this. She ran back and supposedly talked to a technician. When she came back, she said it was the trigger blade safety that broke. So I have pictures of what that looks like from one of our viewers, commenters, that emailed me and he sent these pictures of the exact same thing that happened on his firearm. And that's what we, in previous videos, kind of suspected might have happened to this. So it's the little pivot point, uh, the little roll pin that's in there. Right at that point, it breaks and cracks and the trigger from the email that I received and we conversated back and forth, that viewer, he told me that the trigger would not fall apart. Those pieces didn't come out. However, it was locked up. So until you take that pivot pin out and get it apart, you won't really realize, or unless you were to somehow get under it and look hard enough, then you'd know it was cracked. But anyway, she told me that that is what broke. She told me that's never broke before as far as she knew, but that's what they all say with a broken part. So I'm not trying to make this too long-winded, but it just, it happened in this sequence. So she told me that's what happened. I told her, thank you very much for her honesty. I thought that was great. Now we know what happened. Okay, good. We have somewhere to go. I can talk to you guys. I was just about to make a video on that. And boom, I get a phone call from the original guy I was talking to. That rep called me back and said, hey, I heard you wanted to talk to me some more. You know, you wanted some more answers on that trigger. Please call me back. So I called him back, got a hold of him, and he told me, that, sorry, they don't keep notes on this kind of stuff. He's not sure what happened. The trigger was broken, and that was it. They replaced it. That's all he knows. He can't tell me anymore. I told him, I said, gee, that's funny, because I talked to a girl three days ago, and she told me exactly what happened. He didn't have an answer for that. He kept with his story of, well, he's not sure about that, and he knows that there's no notes on it, and he can't tell me anything more. The, his tone changed just a little bit. So... I ended the call. It was nice of him to call me back. I appreciate Springfield fixing the firearm. I'd say they do have a good customer service as far as getting the gun fixed and getting it back to you. That's great. Now, is there honesty 100%? No, I can't say that anymore. Um, that has been lost. So the Springfield honesty, just like every other company I've dealt with in the firearms industry almost, um, that I've had to deal with, with warranty issues, they will lie to some extent to protect their business. They'll just do it. It's what they do. What stinks about that is we should have been taught as kids never to lie. You just, lying is not good. Honesty is always the best policy. I don't know why lying has to be a part of business, um, but it is. So we have to deal with that. So did Springfield fix the gun? Yes. Did they fix it in a timely manner? Yes. Um, did the trigger break in a catastrophic way? Absolutely. Can I trust this plastic trigger with this tiny little trigger safety here? This little polymer safety on this tiny little roll pin, uh, it's plastic and plastic with metal in between. So anytime you make plastic with metal, there's going to be something that goes wrong in my opinion. Everything from little weed whackers to parts on cars. So can I trust this firearm with like in this condition? Absolutely not. I appreciate that they were honest. I appreciate that they fixed it. That's really good. The turnaround time was awesome. However, I'm not going to carry this as a defensive firearm for any capacity, whether it be, you know, I'm not a woods defense person. I live in Ohio. Uh, we don't have to worry about anything but deer and coyote. But people who do use it in the places that they need it, or if you're going to use this as a defensive handgun, you want it to be reliable. So I would say that this needs a trigger replacement, period. Um, there's many companies out there in the comment section. Everybody talks about it anyway. Uh, you can find out where to go. I would say that this needs an aluminum housing trigger, not a polymer replacement, because then you're just adding a polymer replacement to a polymer problem, but got to have some sort of an aluminum housing. Is this going to break for everybody? No. Now, I did just put it through the thousand round dry fire test. Uh, like I promised everybody, I would dry fire it a thousand times. That's a thousand one, a thousand two, a thousand three. 1,004. I did it with my middle finger for more leverage. 1,005. I did it with his finger for more leverage, just to put more pressure on it. I did it fast. I did it slow. I dry fired this thing a thousand times. Nothing's broken it so far. Now, immediately after doing that thousand round dry fire test, we took it outside and we ran Freedom Munitions, regular 180 grain ball factory ammunition, and then I ran a magazine of the 155 grain XTPs loaded on top of Accurate Number 9, 
and those are traveling pretty good. Well, I live in Ohio and it totally sucks. So we're out here in the rain, but that's all right. I'm just gonna pop off 11 rounds of this Freedom Munition, 180 grain. We're gonna let that go. We're gonna see how that does. This is after the thousand rounds of dry fire. All right, those went through just fine. Now we're gonna move on to my hand loads, which is power pistol sitting under 155 grain nozzlers. These are going about 1260 feet per second. And I'm gonna light 15 of these off. No problem so far. Inertial reload. Now let's address inertial loading real quick. That's when you take a loaded magazine, which this one's not, I'm not gonna do it in the house, but you have a slide lock gun and you go to insert the magazine and I can't make it do it like normal, but I'll simulate it. And you smack the magazine in and then the slide chambers forward. That's not good because it will strip a cartridge out of the magazine and load it into the chamber. Now, if you're running competition or certain applications, maybe if you're in a firefight and you've been trained and you like it to do that, maybe you've modified you're going to do that. Uh, that's something you would like. It does cut down on reload time because when you smack the magazine and you present out and you're going to go ahead and use your thumb to drop the slide release, it already drops it for you. You're that much quicker to get onto your shot. Okay, I understand that. But let's just get it out of the way that from the factory, a gun is not supposed to do that. This is a slide lock and this is a slide release. This is not an inertial release mechanism. It's not supposed to do that. Is it a bad thing? That's up to you if you like it or not. But in the comment section, people have said, oh, that's a good thing. That's not a problem. The thing is with this firearm, it didn't do that. This gun was fine before we sent it back to the factory and before it had this trigger problem. I made you, maybe it finally hit that magical number of dropping the slide because I do manually drop the slide and then over time what happens is that you will wear this little piece down and it rounds off instead of being sharp and it very easily it takes not much pressure to let it go. A good thing? I don't know. It's up to you. Me personally I just think it's kind of a probably a premature wear part on this firearm for it to be doing that at this point in its life. That's all. I gotta adjust my hearing protection, because it sucks. My glasses are fogged up and I can't see anything now. Alright, so it ran those and it didn't kill the trigger off. So, alright, next step I guess. Everything functioned fine. It was raining on us. Uh, accuracy sucked for me because I was not shooting well, but the gun performed fine. Nothing broke. I'm going to load up the blue dot. I think some of you might have seen my post about blue dot. I'm going to load it up even faster. So I think I was getting around 1250 on book velocity for the accurate, but I can add another. Um, I can go up to about 1350. So that's going to happen with a blue dot. I'll load that up. That's lightning in this gun. That's about as hot as I can go. So we'll run how many ever through there, and we'll see if it functions with that. Personally, I don't think that I will break this little trigger safety again. But, of course, as soon as I start carrying it, that'll be the day that it breaks. So what do you guys think about that? How many people have had this problem in the comments section? Please let me know um, if you've had anything to do with this trigger. 
They, of course, say that they haven't had this problem. Both people, the girl and the guy, said that they haven't had this problem. But I don't believe that. All those companies always say that. Um, at least a trigger replacement. This is a 10 millimeter firearm. It's going to have a lot of recoil. It's going to have a lot of effects going on in the flex of the gun. Um, what do you guys think about that? Is, does that have anything to do with breaking the trigger? Or is it simply just mechanical just leverage on that trigger that breaks it? Is it recoil that comes through the firearm? Or is it leverage? Just repeated use? Is it just a flaw? Is it just a polymer flaw somehow? Um, making the definite case that we need an aluminum trigger in there? Or any kind of non-polymer trigger? Let me know what you think. We're going to take it back out more. We're going to take it out with hot ammunition. We'll probably just keep running ammo through it just to make sure it goes. We'll do other things to it. As much as it's incredibly boring, I will put another maybe 5,000 rounds of dry fire through this thing. Maybe 10,000. I don't know. I definitely want to put this up against a Delta Elite because this is a 3.8 inch barrel and that's a 5 inch barrel. So I want to see the differences in that in gel with some of the various loads that we have. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you like this kind of content, please like, share, and subscribe. If you want to support us directly, we're on Patreon. In the meantime, stay safe, have fun, keep shooting. We'll see you back again with more 10mm stuff.